Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in. I thought I'd grace you with my face in this video. When we talk about Tucker Carlson and his recent interview on Redacted, where he says he has some insider information on aliens and that they're real and that the government is hiding this information from the general public. Now, I think that this is a hoax, even though I am open to the idea of aliens. So I'm going to start this video and get into my explanation of why I think this is a false you know what and let's just get started the second thing that bothers me is the ufo story and uh, you know the more you dig into that and talk to people with no with actual knowledge of it again that's a another story where there are some you know fanciful ideas floating around that are just you know there's no evidence that they're true but if you talk to people who you know have actual knowledge of it that they gathered themselves there are parts of that story that i do not understand at all that are really 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 dark it's so so I'm just going to cut him off and say, I don't like this whole narrative that we need to wait for the establishment to give us disclosure. We can understand these things ourselves. We don't need them. And he's also sort of setting a precedent that reminds me of 2020 when the vaccine was being rolled out. And there were all those articles at first that said that the elites had access to the vaccine before the general populace did. And I'm getting the same idea here where Tucker Carlson and all the high end journalists and insiders, they have access to the information, but not the general populace. Like, sorry, I can't tell you. I wish I could. It's just it's it's too dark and you're not ready for it. And it this is a marketing strategy. Like, you know how Grand Theft Auto, they've released their trailer already for their new video game, even though it's not going to be at least for a while, because it's setting the stage. It's getting people excited for what's to come. It's the same thing with a lot of these like narratives that they build up too. So dark that I, you know, haven't told my wife about it. I mean, I, I haven't verified any right. of this. So that's another thing. Tucker Carlson's dad was in the CIA, and this is sort of something that's in that whole spook culture where they can't tell their wives about certain things that they learn. Like, I don't really see that too much with journalists. Usually journalists, that's their job, is to find this information and then to tell us. The they should be, like, working for us, ideally, to tell us what's going on. But he's not. He's straight up saying, I have information, but I'm not going to tell you. And he's basically has, he basically has the same rationale as what the government has, that it's too dark and people aren't ready for it. And it's like, if you're a journalist, Tucker, why can't you tell us? Does someone have a gun to your head? Or is this like a narrative? I'm not trying to say I really don't want to accuse him of being um, a spook who's working against the people, because that's actually a very serious statement. Like that's that's treasonous for me to say that. So I don't know. And I don't want to put that label on him. But like, I wish he explained in this interview better why he's not telling us this information. But this is not just stuff that I read on the internet. I know you all are very, very grounded in that story. So I think I know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. But there's some stuff there that's just like, man, I, I'm not even sure what that means. There's a spiritual component there that I, I don't fully understand. Um, so, yeah. A spiritual component. What is he talking about? Is this like Gnosticism? Are these like archons harvesting our louche or something? What does that mean? Like... You know, I, I delved deep into the UFO thing back in 2015, and I like the idea that it's not just nuts and bolts metal aircraft. It's probably frequency where they can move in and out of our dimension. So maybe that's what he means by spiritual, or is he going down more of like the, the Gnostic path of loose harvesting? So that story bothers me. And I think, last thing I'll say, that one of the reasons that we've had all the, these disclosures and all these, what, 10 whistleblowers at this point, and it hasn't really become front page news. Part of it's suppression. You know, parts of the government don't want you to know about it. But part of it is the public can't deal with it. It's too far out. The implications are too um, profound. And so, and I understand that. Because I've heard things where I'm just like, oh, man, I, I don't even really. So his rationale is, oh, it's too dark to tell people. Oh, because people are so happy nowadays. Everybody's just so happy when they wake up in the morning, and this would just ruin their day. Not the terrible inflation, the rapid, the rapid degeneracy, how no one gets along, whether they're Republican or Democrat. No, no, this would just be too much. Like, are you kidding me? If anything, this would wake people up that we have to work together. We're all on Team Human and there's some malevolent force that we can gang together and fight like this this 
in my opinion, would probably make people feel more alive. Like, what do we have? Like, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm in a, someone who's in a pretty good position. You know, I have a, a roof over my head. I have a family. You know, I got my place decorated for Christmas here. Girlfriend helped with that. But a lot of people, including myself even, I still feel like really nihilistic because of this just kind of dead culture that we live in. And something like this, a di alien disclosure, I think that could revive a lot of people if you kind of see what I'm saying. So I just, I do not like this rationale that it's too dark to tell the people about. I want to know that, oh, yeah, honestly. Deeply so. disturbing stuff. You know, forget like saucers you know I mean? and technology. It's yeah, deeply, yeah. No, deeply no, 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 disturbing no. stuff. Stuff that I haven't even told Natalie. Yep. I agree with you. It's so disturbing. Exactly. I can't even tell my kids. My kids ask me different stories about it and I, I won't say yeah, it because no, no, no. it's so dark. <laughs> it's I so agree. dark. I yeah. totally agree. Miles is watching. So. Okay, Miles, if you're watching the show, Daddy's yeah. not going to tell you about that part of the UFO <laughs> stuff and what's going on with the government. Well, can, in that can, can I say one thing? I, I'm, they've known clearly. I mean, this is, I think, established, and I feel comfortable saying this as fact. The U.S. government, I mean, these are real, whatever they are. They're not human. And the government has known that for a long time, possibly going back to the 1930s at least. And, of course, there's tons of evidence in the written record, in the physical record, in paintings. So Tucker is saying this isn't just something that the U.S. government newly discovered. Well, I, I guess he is, but these aliens didn't just show up on planet Earth in the last century. They've been here amongst humanity for a long time. They're a part of this realm that we share. So that is a little bit more sinister than, oh, they just arrived here after Roswell. But it sounds like he's setting the stage for, um, it's the typical UFO story that, the government made a pact with them back in the day, and in exchange for alien technology, these aliens are able to harvest the citizens. Um, that could be the route that this is taking. Um, and in the and in literature, that people have been seeing and interacting with these things for a long time. So we know that. But the justification one often hears is, well, the government, the government, various presidents who have been read in, not all have been, um, haven't wanted to disclose this because it would scare people. And I've always thought that's that's bullshit. You know, you're hiding a crime, which they are, by the way, in my right. opinion. Um, but I do think there's a sense in which that's not totally crazy. Like there is some stuff, if it's true, and I'm kind of thinking it may be true, that's so radical that... Um, yeah, well, as we both said, we you know don't want to tell the people we love most about it because like why would you, you know, disturb someone like that? So I kind of get that. I hate to admit it. I'm not I'm not arguing for hiding things. I believe in the truth and I believe in disclosure. But I understand the impulse. Like holy smokes, this is heavy. You know right. what I mean? And the all right, I'm gonna just get into why I think this whole UFO thing is a hoax. Uh, there is a controlling class whose job it is to farm and manage the population, which is a hard job. And there's certain cycles that occur in these empires, like the one that we live in in America. And one of those cycles is revolution. And there's a reason why we don't study the Weimar Republic in public schools, because if we did, people would see that it pretty closely mirrors the modern society we live in today with rampant degeneracy that the general populace is not in favor of, super high inflation, with the natural heritage citizens being oppressed it's there's a few more examples too that i need to brush up on but those are the main ones and oh yeah along with nihilism too and this foments historically revolutions um we all know what happened after the weimar republic and i think we're gearing up to that again coming up to this new election and the controlling class sees this and they're like and they understand it would be spectacular if a grassroots real sort of revolution against the system were to take place. So as a stopgap, they need something in their back pocket to throw out as a narrative in order to derail any sort of organic movement. And the only thing I can think of that would be as spectacular as a grassroots movement against the system would be alien disclosure, where suddenly... We've taken back control of the country. It's post Weimar Republic. And but bam, we see an alien has landed on the White House lawn. 
that would totally derail the movement potentially because that's pretty insane. Just like a revolution would be insane. And I think they're keeping it in their back pocket in case they need to use it to distract us. Doesn't, doesn't that make sense? Let me know. Let me know what you think. Let's just keep watching this. The government's involvement in it makes it even heavier because then well, you realize the complicity. Exactly. Of it. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking about the same thing. I yeah. can tell. Mm, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Excuse are. me. Uh, Should I go? No, 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 no. <laughs> we, this is what we used to talk about in commercial breaks all the time. This, this is the kind of stuff. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, uh, so at the time, I never would have believed any of that. But now I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I'd be remiss if I didn't get you out of here on this, Tucker, which is you've covered politics a long time. And I trust your instincts on this subject more than just about anyone on this subject that I personally know. Um, I've said on this show that I don't think that the deep state when I say the deep state, I mean the permanent government, the people that are there long after the people that are yes. elected come and go and come and go. For sure. The deep state won't, will not let Trump become president. That's my own personal belief. Um, yeah. Neocons, of course, are lining up behind Nikki Haley. You see the press coverage, the Associated Press. You see the, 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 the mainstream media, the, the, the military industrial complex. Wants so one criticism I have of these larger alt media companies like Redacted and uh, Tucker Carlson is I feel like they just don't get into the nitty gritty details. They'll say vague things like the military industrial complex, the neocons, but they don't get into the particular people behind those institutions, which I'm about to do right now. And after I do, I think you're going to understand why. Let's look at the military industrial complex that makes up companies like Boeing, but Boeing doesn't directly tell the United States who to go to war with. That's more so done by like the Council of Foreign Relations. And the board chairman of that is David M. Rubenstein. Co he's the co-founder of the Carlyle Group. The vice chairman is Blair Efron. And the president is Richard Haas. All three of these people are Zionist Jays who are extremely supportive of Israel. Then we have the State Department with Victoria Newland, who is also, she is a fanatic J Zionist. And these are the people who dictate who America goes to war with. And you see here the conflict of interest that arises with these people. And he brought up how the neocons support Nikki Haley. Well, who does Nikki Haley emphatically support more than any other GOP candidate, which is saying a lot? Every time she goes on stage, she talks about supporting Israel. She said verbatim, we need to give them as much money they want, whatever they want, whenever they want it, no questions asked. That's why the neocons support her. And neocons would be like Victoria Newland is like the epitome of a neocon. She's not even like Republican or Democrat. She's like a Kaganite neocon. And what I mean by that is their main goal is to bring democracy to the entire world. She has said this before. And they, and they tried to implement that in Iraq, for example. How well did that turn out? And a lot of people knew that it wouldn't turn out well. If they just know the basics about Iraqi culture, you could have saw this failure from a mile away. But they're fanatical. And these are the people calling the shots in our country. And it's not hateful to say what they all have in common. It's just true. But these companies... I hate to throw shade because I respect them. I think they're sharp. They do a good job. But they don't want to say these things because they're worried about losing money. It's Nikki Haley, of course. They want to continue to make a lot of money. Biden is a walking vegetable. Uh, what do you see happening in 2024? What do your political instincts tell you from having covered this your, your whole life? I mean, it's opaque. It's like looking through a shower curtain. You can only see outlines. Um, and I'm not bragging, but one of my few skills is I, I, you know. See, this is what I mean is they're always like, everything's so opaque. I only see outlines. It's like, no, you can name these people. It's open information. Why don't you name uh, the guy who works for the Department of Homeland Security? He's the one behind the current open borders that we have right now. I know people say all oh, open borders. That's not true. Uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. And he has the exact same things in common that Victoria Newland does and the top three people of the Council of Foreign Relations.
called most races pretty accurately because they're pretty obvious. The outlines are obvious years in advance. And certainly a year out, they're very obvious. In this case... And his name is Mayorkas. That's his last name. Who I, who I, the, the head of the Department of Homeland Security. It seems irresolvable. So you have, you know, basically every power center in the country will do anything to prevent Trump from winning anything. I mean, that's the most important thing to them is to keep Trump from becoming president again. Now, why is that is a whole separate and very interesting conversation, but that's just a fact, okay? And these are the same people who are lecturing us about democracy. We're saving democracy. Democracy dies in darkness. Democracy is the most important thing. And Tucker Carlson knows the connection. The reason why these military industrial complex people say, oh, democracy, democracy, is because they're also they, like Victoria Newland, like Kaganites, neoconservatives, and the neoconservative goal is to bring democracy all over the world. It's not really even conservative. That's what I'm saying. It's not really Republican or Democrat. It's this weird Kaganite expansionist obsession that they have. And Victoria Newland, her family's also obsessed with this idea that her ancestors were persecuted in Russia. So she has like this blood rivalry to pick with Russia. And that directly affects our foreign policy with that country as we can see on the world stage. You heard that creepy defense contractor say what we're really doing is preserving democracy. We're not just like selling weapons, we're preserving democracy. Right. It, which was a nauseating clip, and I, and I hope on some level he's punished for that. But um, anyway, so, but then at the same time, you have Trump like is leading, leading the race in, in every nonpartisan or li all the liberal polls are showing him leading the race, beating Joe Biden in the, in the battleground states. So like they can't let him win, but if they don't let him win, then it's just super obvious that all this democracy stuff was fraudulent and that it's not a democracy. It's an oligarchy run by the richest people that Bernie Sanders back when he was a free man was telling the truth. And so at that point, like the veil's off. We can't pretend anymore. Like when they killed Kennedy, which they did, um, they could kind of pretend like everything's fine. But after this election, there's no pretending everything's fine. Everyone will know. And it is a little bit like you get kidnapped, you get thrown in the back of the car, and all of a sudden the kidnapper turns around and lowers his mask and you see his face. And that's not a good thing. Because once you see his face, he has to kill you because you know who he is. He can't let you go then, okay? So you sort of want the kidnapper to keep his mask on because the pretense allows him the freedom to let you go in the end, to pretend everything's fine. But they've showed us who they are with such un... See, I know he's talking about a different thing. He's more discussing the left and right paradigm, but his metaphor fits pretty well with what I'm talking about now too. Once the second, like Scooby-Doo, we take the mask off, like, wow, it's this group of high-end people, not their entire group, but this high-end group, once we name them, the mask is off, and it's like a knife fight at that point for the heart of our nation. That's why it's such a big deal that they keep this all under wraps. That's why it's such a big deal that this is the number one thing you can't directly call out on the social media platforms. Because it's to them, it's like life or death. They would rather destroy the entire system than give up the reins of power. Unmistakable clarity that I, I do, you know, I do, kind of don't know how we get along after this election unless they decelerate and, and just and just do what they should do, which is like, look, we don't like Trump. Here's why. We don't think he's good for the country. Here's why. We think Joe Biden's great. Here's why. America, make your choice. But I don't think they are going to do that. They're morally obligated to do that, but they won't. And it's incumbent on them to do that. Stop charging them with bullshit crimes that your own people skate on. Like, that's the truth. Stop that. Just let the election happen. Let's have a free and fair election for the first time in a while since 2016. And if we, if they allow that. All right, it's just going to go on and on. It's just going to be more surface level stuff. You know, not that I don't respect these guys, but they just don't get to the heart of the issue. And I understand why it's they'd be putting their lives on the line if they did and and lose all their precious accolades and money too. look what happened to yay. Um, so uh, that pretty much concludes everything I wanted to go over here in this video. Um, yeah. Let me know down in the comments if you liked it. Feel free to also join my Telegram group. We got a nice community growing there of like-minded people. And uh, yeah, just to show you that you're not alone out there. There's a lot of people that uh, think like you. So, all right, have a good one.